Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Good Old Podcast. I'm Jack Franchuli for Wahoo's 24-7. And we're joined this week by a man that you all are very familiar with, former Virginia DB, Tony Covington. Tony, I'm really happy to have you on the show for the first time. Oh, thanks for having me, Jack. I really appreciate it. You know, when I was thinking of who really to touch base on what happened against Illinois, you were one of the first persons that I thought about. Um, because you have an unfiltered look into UVA football. And I want to hear your unfiltered opinion of what you saw against Illinois. Uh, it was disappointing, quite honestly. And uh, I, I was honestly surprised. Uh, I know going into this season, questions about the defense, but you never thought that we'd be talking about a struggling offense and considering the weapons that we have. So, to see our defense really bow up, get the ball back to them, maintain doing what they needed to do, uh, and then the offense to struggle so mightily, I, I didn't, I didn't see that one coming. And so, and then you know we didn't make many adjustments. So it was just, I don't know. I just think it was just a really off game for for both the 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 offense and and on the sideline, quite honestly. Yeah, that was the one thing I want to touch base with you because where everyone is focusing on the O-line, and granted, I understand they didn't protect Brennan Armstrong, and the man was he was running for his life at some point, he, and he his judgment was impaired. Sometimes he left the pocket when he should have stayed in the pocket, and it, it, you can tell that Brennan wasn't able to be Brennan in the game. But when it, you know, a lot of also talk was what can you do to scheme for this offensive line because we didn't really see much of, you know, jet sweeps or bubble screens. What, what do you think UVA needs to do moving forward? Yeah, I I think you hit it on the head, quite honestly. Um, You know, when you face a team like Illinois who has an attacking style defense, you got to get the ball out of Brennan's hands quickly, especially when you've got an offensive line that's very inexperienced. Uh, Guys haven't had uh, time to really gel together. There was, you know, they weren't consistent in camp. You'd have one or two guys out, and, you know, guys would be subbing in, playing multiple positions. So getting the ball out of Brennan's hands quickly, getting it to his guys in space quickly uh, and utilizing the running backs. I mean, sometimes, you know, you, you want to run the ball effectively, but sometimes just a flare pass or a quick pass to the running back is just as good as a sweep. So uh, as Virginia moves forward uh, fate this week, uh, I think they just need to get back to the basics. Um, and look, I haven't had a chance to watch ODU's defense. I've watched their offense um, to this point. So uh, my estimation, they've got some playmakers, though. You know, they play a 4-2-5. So I think Virginia would be well served to just really get back to the basics. I know they want to run it. But as Coach Kitchen, Kitchings likes to say, it's all about winning the down. So whether you're going to pass it or throw it, you have to win the down and you can't run it on first, run it on second and get in third and long. So many times, I think they were third and nine plus uh, seven or eight times on Saturday. And you really put a lot of pressure on that, on that inexperienced O-line and a lot of Brennan to to be great uh, when you do that. Yeah, it was interesting because they were playing man and cover one and you saw that safety so far out there and you're like, Man, you had such an opportunity to bring in Billy Kemp or one of the running backs in there. So I think there's going to be – this is a learning opportunity for both not only the players but the coach players to execute when you have that opportunity. Um, So that is definitely something that they'll be watching. But I wanted your opinion on something because obviously a lot of the fan base was looking into those possible PI calls that wasn't called for Illinois. But I saw Anthony Johnson take advantage of that too. Um, He was really good by using his hands. What did you think about that secondary for Virginia? I felt like that it's coming together really well with those guys, Antonio Clary, Jonas Sanker, Lex Long, who I thought had a, a very good game starting, um, and also Anthony Johnson and Fentrell Cypress. I like how they're coming along. I really do. They are playing very physical. Uh, even on the on Cypress, he was in great position. He got his head around. The ball was just placed perfectly, just missed his hand. You know, so it wasn't like he was running, trailing the guy. He had him where he wanted him. And, and the key, he got his head around. And we hadn't been seeing that for the last five or six years uh, in that Virginia secondary. So I like how these guys are developing. I love the physicality that they're playing with. Uh, and, you know, the officials allowed him to play because, 
uh, that Illinois secondary, they were real handsy. It was a lot of holding going on, a lot of chucking downfield past the five-yard mark um, that they got away with that they weren't calling. So uh, I think that also impacted that Virginia uh, receiving core too. But to quote UVA wide receiver coach Marquis Hagans, you got to be violent with those hands if you're a wide receiver and you're facing such pressure like that. Um, moving to ODU, you said you watched a little bit about their offense. Obviously, they have quarterback Hayden Wolf. They have a 1,000-yard rusher in Blake Watson, wide receiver Ali Jennings, who's leading the country in receiving, and obviously a tight end that is reminiscent of Jelani Woods. He's six foot eight. What type of threat does this OD offense bring? Well, they spread you out, uh, and, and they do have some weapons. They've got a big quarterback who stands tall in the pocket uh, at 6'5". So, you know, he, he, he can get the ball to him. What I have noticed is that he will, he will throw it out there for, for the, the defenders to get, though. You know, he does put, it in some, put himself in some bad situations. But I also see that he throws a really nice deep ball. Uh, he and Jennings have a great connection. I mean, against – East Carolina, I kept seeing them catch the, him catch the same deep crossing route three or four times. And I was just like, is anybody going to guard this guy running across the middle like that? So I think that Virginia needs to continue to be physical with them. You know, that I, I'm a huge believer in being physical at the line of scrim, scrimmage. I call it the great American chokeout. And so if they can't get off the ball, they can't get downfield and you allow the pressure to be able to get there. I hate playing off coverage and, and letting guys run free because that becomes a version of seven on seven. So um, while ODU does have some talent offensively, I think Virginia uh, matches up well with them. When you're going to be watching the game on Saturday, what particular matchup are you watching? Uh, I want to see uh, who's going to be guarding Jennings for sure. Uh, and I want to see uh, how that offensive line responds. So I, 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 most of the time, I don't look at the trenches as much as I am this year. Uh, but I, I, it's so critical for Virginia to be successful, both on the defensive side and the offensive side. I just want to see how they're manning up. Uh, because at the end of the day, it's about individual matchups. And you got to whip the guy in front of you. Uh, in order for your team to win. So, and that that's want to, that's something that you can't give them. You guys just got to want to whip the guy across from. Them. Actually, that's one thing that Tony Elliott kept stressing during his press conference on Tuesday was not, yes, he wants technique and fundamentals. And he talked about that, but also the mindset. He wants these guys mentally to be in the game. Um, once you watch the first two games, anything, I know, obviously you said offense was kind of surprising, but have you adapted your expectations for the season based on what you saw and what any surprises that you've seen? Not yet, because after the Richmond game, I going into Illinois, I still didn't know what we had as a team. You know, I saw potential in a few places, but I still didn't know what we had. And then against Illinois, I, it just confused me. So I still don't know what we have. I do like the fact that Virginia's defense is making strides. They uh, are much more fundamentally sound. They are much more physical than I've seen them, which is, you know, that's the throwback. That's how we used to do it back in the day, just a real physical type of defense. So I'm happy to see that they will only get better. Now I want that same type of physicality, uh, physical mindset on the offensive side of the ball uh, at, at every position. You know, I want violent running backs. I want violent receivers. I want a violent offensive line. And, you know, just the overall makeup of that team, just be one that when they when teams know that they're playing Virginia, A, they know they're going to be hit in the mouth and they're going to get all that they want. Obviously, in the first game of the season, Virginia Tech was hit in the mouth by ODU. That was certainly a surprise to many people. When you look at this matchup, how confident are you in UVA and do you have a prediction for the game? I'm not confident at all because uh, these first two weeks, they've kind of just thrown me off to, to win this game. Absolutely. But if we don't come to play like we didn't last week, anybody can be beat. ODU knows that they can beat power five teams because they've done it. And so they'll come in with a lot to uh, a lot of confidence and, they really don't have anything to lose. So they can throw caution to the wind and play with reckless abandon. And when you play a team that has nothing to lose, they are a very dangerous team. So Virginia has to really come out 
uh, and be violent from the beginning. They have to start fast and just overwhelm ODU from the, from the break. Virginia needs to remember the last time they faced ODU when they were down 21 nothing. They need to remember that, too. Absolutely. So, Well, Tony, thank you so much for joining us on this episode this week. Thank you for having me, Jack. It's been a blast. Thanks again for Tony for joining us on the show. It's always nice to have his perspective on not only the Illinois loss, but also looking ahead what Virginia has to do and to look ahead to the ODU matchup. So thanks again for Tony. So we're going to take a very quick break. On the way back, we're going to dissect ODU's defense for just a little bit. Plus, this is something that a lot of Virginia fans are excited about. UVA is going to host a legacy on grounds on Saturday for the Virginia ODU game. As you know, they host several visitors during home games, and there is one that has grabbed the attention of Virginia fans. So we'll be right back with a little bit more on that visitor. The mindset, just knowing that, like, you know, we took our first L and it didn't feel good. So now, like, it's that, that, that certain focus that we got now that is just like, all right, now we know how it feels. We don't want to feel that again. So uh, let's keep it positive moving forward. Uh, but ODU, as I told the guys, first and foremost, they're confident. They've already beaten the Power Five. They're prideful. They want to win the state just like we want to win the state. And they got a leg up uh, on everybody because they already got one victory uh, in state. Um, they're capable. They're very, very, very capable. They've proven that, but then when you watch them on film, uh, defensively, uh, I think that collectively they're more athletic than, than what we saw last week. Not quite as big up front, but athletically. You know, I mean, they got, they got a 6-2 corner that can play anywhere. And, I mean, he can run. He can, he can play man coverage. Uh, their linebacker, 42, is a really, really good football player. You know, people are going to look at him and probably underestimate him, but he's a really, really good football player. He's the heart and soul of that defense. Number five is a very athletic defensive lineman. They got depth on the D-line so they can roll guys in, keep them fresh. Um, but I think you can also tell uh, the pride and what the football team is about by how their field goal block team plays. And they block two field goals. Right, they block two field goals, and that just tells you a lot about a football team. I mean, they're playmakers. Uh, they have really good receivers, tight ends, really good. Uh, their running backs really shifty back there, and then they have a quarterback that uh, can launch it. So, uh, I mean, we just know that they're going to come out here and they're going to play. I mean, they're going to play their hearts out, and it's going to be a battle. So, I mean, we're not taking anything for granted. We're coming out here to work because uh, they're they're a very good opponent. I mean, they're going to come in here, and, and since there's blood in the water, and they're going to come after us. So, so we got to have our minds in the right place. So as you can see, Virginia is definitely not taking ODU lightly. Hi, welcome back to the show. I'm Jack Franchilli for Wahoos 24-7. And talking to Antonio Clary a little bit on Tuesday, he joked that he faced Jelani Woods in practice last year. So that should prepare him to face ODU's six foot eight tight end. I mean, that's a... Fairly good training exercise facing up to a guy to the size and athletic ability of Jelani Woods. Now, we talked a lot about ODU's offense with Tony on the first half of the show. We dived in just a little bit on defense, but mostly we stuck to the offensive side of the ball, which just has some big play playmakers on that side. We talked about Jennings. We talked about the quarterback. I just mentioned their tight end. So you do have some good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. They also have some good playmakers. On the defensive side of the ball. Now, they don't return as many returners from last season as they did on the offensive side, but they do return enough to raise an eyebrow or two. Now, when you look at this defense, the first thing that stands out is that they're stronger against the run than they are against the pass. Um, they still need to generate a little bit more pass rush. Kind of what we're hearing a little bit about Virginia, although they have started to get a little bit more pass rush towards the second half of the Illinois game. Now, when you look at their personnel, what stands out to me is one of the defensive linemen, Marcus Hayes. That's who you want to keep an eye on, especially with Virginia's offensive line struggling against Illinois. What difference in the defensive line is that although Illinois was big physical, it's when you look at ODU's defensive line, they're a little more athletic. Now, Marcus Hayes wasn't a regular starter for ODU last season, but he was a leader in sacks with 5.5 last year. 
So he is back. So that is one name for you to remember as you prepare for that matchup. Now, the other thing that stands out to me about this defense is their 4-2-5 formation, who is, and then in that two, it's anchored by Ryan Henry, who's one of their all-star linebackers. Um, he has 75 stops in that, in that defense last season. So he's a name for you to know as well. When it comes to the secondary, they still need big plays. Um, they have some talent there with uh, Trey Hawkins um, being their number one cover corner. Um, and then they also have a safety tandem of Rotarium Johnson and Terry Jones, who have combined for over 150 stops last season. So they have talent on that side of the ball. And they're looking to prove that they're able to stop the pass. Now, if I was Virginia, I would probably still pass the ball a little bit more when you're facing this ODU defense because they do that, that is an area where I think they have some key matchups there. They're going to play man coverage. We know this. That is probably what they're going to try to do after watching the Illinois tape. That's basically the defense in a nutshell of what to expect from ODU. What also you should expect from ODU is a team that's out to prove they are the best in the Commonwealth. Unless you're living under the rock, ODU has already one win over an in-state rival. They beat Virginia Tech in a game that had everything that you can imagine, including coaches stuck in an elevator. ODU beat Virginia Tech in that opening game of the year in their home turf. So what they would love to do is make it two for two and beat Virginia at Scott Stadium. And if you're, like I told Tony, UVA fans would definitely remember playing ODU and having to come back from being 21 nothing down. So ODU is not a team to take lightly. Now, I was looking um, through Mike Barber's recent article. He's a reporter for the Richmond Times-Dispatch, and he was talking to a lot of the ODU players this week. One of the quotes is, it's always good to know you can beat an ACC team, a Power 5 school. We definitely feel like we can beat these guys too. So definitely locker room material, but definitely shows the mentality of the team coming into Scott Stadium. They aren't intimidated. So the best thing that Virginia can do is come out quick because these guys are coming in with some fire. They're coming in after a loss themselves, but also something to prove in the Commonwealth. So Virginia will want to start off quick to quiet that fire, to say, no, this is our home turf. And we are bouncing back from that loss to Illinois. So before I get to my prediction, the, another piece of news that comes from this Saturday is when you have a home game, you are hosting visitors. So Virginia will host several recruits on grounds for the game, like they do every home game. But there's one name that has grabbed most of the headlines or has most of Virginia fans' attention. That is three-star safety in the 2024 class, Zaire Rainer. He is a Virginia legacy. His father, Wally, was a legend at UVA. He went on to play in the NFL. Virginia has yet to offer him, but they are recruiting him. So he has talked to both high school relations um, director, Blanda Wolf, and he's also talked to defensive passing game coordinator and defensive backs coach, Kieran Cox. So they have been recruiting him behind the scenes. They have not yet to offer, but this staff has been different in how they approach offers. They don't offer everybody. And they generally offer when they see you face-to-face -face one time um, in most cases. So an offer could be coming quickly. So he'll be on grounds. And I spoke to him a little bit on Tuesday night. I have my full feature on him on our site on Wahoo's 24-7, where he not only dives into his relationship with his dad and the legacy and what it's like to, <laughs> to honestly play football under that legacy, but he also talks about his recruitment, which schools are recruiting him. He's got plenty of offers already with offers that include Penn State, which his uncle, Anthony Poindexter, was the one to recruit him. So he has a lot of big offers and a lot of schools that are after him. I Florida, Florida State. There are a lot of schools that are currently evaluating him as well. So I spoke to him about what it means to get back to Virginia. Now, he's been to UVA a number of times. It's not a school or a program that he's a stranger to, obviously. But there's excitement for him to be on grounds. Listen. It means a lot. Um, this is obviously not my first time up there, but, um, you know, UVA is always a place I've always wanted to go um, since I was a little boy. 
Um, my whole life I've been around UVA alum, UVA legends, like Coach Point Dexter, um, like Thomas Jones, Anquan Womack, um, Brian, uh, Brian Tweet, all these great players. And uh, I'm just super excited, man. I'm super excited to be back up there. I love Charlottesville. I love everything about UVA. And uh, me and my family are super excited. So there is definitely a lot of excitement for this family to be back on grounds, meeting the new staff in person for the first time. Obviously, they probably know a lot of the Virginia alums on that staff, but it's their first time meeting Tony Elliott. So it will be a good chance for them to see where they stand on Virginia's board and to see how that culture fit. That was the one big thing he said. He believes the UVA culture fits him, but he needed to see it in person. So that will be a visit that we'll be monitoring on Wahoo's 24-7. We'll get visit reactions after as well. You know, we we talked to him about what he's seen so far in the season. He said he's impressed. So get the full details on Wahoo's 24-7. We cover recruiting pretty heavily on the site as well. So we end with our prediction. That's usually how we end our grain previews is I usually give you my insight on what I think the game is going to go. And I am picking Virginia to beat ODU. I am not as co confident to say that Virginia will cover. Um, if you're into gambling and you're betting, I'm not sure if I would bet them to cover. Not sure. They may just. It's, um, I think the Virginia offense will be better. I think there's some matchups that they can key on in this game. So I, I think they will be better against ODU because if it, everything goes to plan, the offense will slowly progress as the players adjust to the scheme. And like Tony Elliott says, don't live in the past. Um, but if they adjust to the scheme and not just the players, but if the coaches adjust to the players as well. So if there's a little bit of play calling difference and the players start making plays, because at the end of the day, sometimes the plays were there. There was sometimes there were open wide receivers. Sometimes there was a chance for a play to happen. But when you have no time to throw, things happen. And mistakes happen and bad habits happen. And we talked about that all with Tony in the first half of the show. So I am picking Virginia to win. So that's it for this episode of the Good Old Podcast. Um, just a note, next week, the schedule is going to be adjusted a little bit because I will be actually watching Virginia play Syracuse on the road. This will be my first uh, road game that I'll be traveling to this season. We expect I will be traveling to all the other road games to cover those games on the road. So with that, I'll be traveling on Thursday. And because of the shortened week, I'm not going to have three episodes to post. I'll have two. So the plan is I'll still have a game recap, recap on Monday, but I will be combining my Tony Elliott press conference kind of takeaways with my game preview into one episode. And I'll be publishing that at some point on Wednesday. So I will have Thursday free to travel to Syracuse. So again, next week, don't expect three episodes of the good old podcast. I will have two episodes of the good old podcast. So, and again, if you like what you're hearing, when you like what you're watching, you're listening, please go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Wahoo's 24 seven, or go ahead and subscribe to wherever you listen to your podcast. And if you go to Apple and Spotify, please leave us a review and rate us. So for Tony Covington, I'm Jackie Franchula and hope you guys have a great rest of your week.